All right, round two here. Hello and good luck to Benfa. We have a non-exciting hand, but we're going to keep it because we actually do have a turn three Nimbus Naiad at worst. Um, do you want to mold six? No, not at all. Um, though hopefully we draw a different early drop because Nimbus Naiad will be way sweeter later on. Mm, that's a pretty good one. But we'll go down and play a swamp, put the presence on the forest, and then take it from there. Ooh, alright, so we have an aggro deck, though it, the 2 on Trampler is not the one I'm as scared of seeing. Our Disciple here is going to be pretty awesome against such a deck. Hmm. Both of our Disciples would be very good. So then the question is, do I really want to trade off my 2-2 flyer for some dork here? <laughs> Ooh, Flame Speaker out of that's a good card. Ooh, well, I have a three drop that I actually like, so I'm perfectly fine grabbing it and playing it now. And then, uh, yeah, moving forward from there. And what my opponent may not know is because, yeah, I need my fifth land uh, to play my Mender and the Sip of Hemlock, but I have my fourth and a couple of plays um, for turns after that, I'll actually play a trade the Opaline Unicorn with the Satter Rambler. Because I just need to stay alive, um, and then I have quite a lot of goodness coming down. This takes a trick out of my opponent's hand. Um, a Titan Strength would be very good here, uh, but that was going to be the case anyway. Alright, so Coordinated Assault, not as scary. Still very good. But I want my Unicorn to be the guy trading. Alright. And then we'll have our Disciple of Phoenix come down uh, to take a card out of my opponent's hand. Also, it's a pretty good butt. And it's certainly going to be something relevant. Ooh, and that's a Fabled Hero. Gosh, what does my opponent have? I mean, it could just be the Fabled Hero because my opponent can't cast it. But uh, as soon as that guy comes down, I can't deal with it for a while until Sip of Hemlock. So this is fine. We could be taking four damage here. It's a little bit low. Still going to do the trade. This could be the Titan Strength or something, but forcing my opponent to play those cards out is okay by me. There it is. So does that kill me though? Because that's a lot of damage. Because I'm taking, uh, what is that, 4, 8, 9, 10? Oof, I'm at 4. Definitely want the Disciple to come down next, because I need to be start blocking and get a little bit of life, but it's going to be tricky. The Sip might be the saving grace here. My opponent must be thinking about the Scry right now, is that what's happening? Now just get another plus two plus two? Yeah, that kills me. Very nice. Well that I wasn't anticipating having both of those. But alas. Bummer, because I think we could have gotten out of that if I had thought of that type of situation. Let's see. I don't think I care about these guys. Definitely don't care about you. It's really just about staying alive, staying alive, right? Because here's going to be grand. We have a bunch of two drops. Definitely want to keep the Phalanx Leader in. It'll be hard for my opponent to deal with the Nimbus Nads, but do I want to maintain this package? Because arguably I can pull them out and bring in a four drop, which isn't great. We'll be able to play. It still like holds back so much. Yeah, I think I do want th this against my opponent. And what don't I want? Do I care? I think I'm just going to take out one of my fixers. Because I don't need this guy. I don't want him on turn 3. It's going to be more like a 5 drop. Um, but I do want to have both of them, I think. So I'll pull out the amulet. Because I actually like the unicorn for ramp. 
And it can trade with one of the early dudes. Yeah, I want to play first. Ooh, that's a bummer. Gonna have to mulligan. It's not what my deck wants to be doing. Uh, this is a keep, although it's sketchy, but I don't want to go down to five on the on the play. Uh, but I have a two drop, and that's kind of what's key against my opponent. And if I draw a swamp, which I have a lot of, I have a really nice two drop. Ooh. This is going to be real hard. Can I erase my opponent? I have my own 2, 3, whatever. So it could happen. Love a land next turn, ideally not a forest, but being able to get a four point life swing and keep bashing it myself will be pretty helpful. Well, that's great. That means my opponent's not attacking. Awesome. I'm pretty sure I trade my agent off for the Flame Speaker Adept or the Favorite Hoplite, and I don't think my opponent wants to trade it off. So I will go ahead and attack with it. Cool. That's what I thought. Here comes some bashing. We're not doing any blocking, that's for sure, because we have blown out, but... All right, Kroon Crusader, that's okay. Kroon Hoplite, a little bit worrisome. So we're playing Nylea's Disciple, we're going to gain four life. We'll bash in with both. Could be a God's Willing, but it doesn't really kill anything. It's still a double lock, I get points of damage through. And I kill a guy, so yeah, that's that's what's happening. And somehow I'm racing this deck. How much my opponent's already shown that I can do a lot of damage. So how much damage can my opponent do with these attacks? Assume everything's coming in. Attacks come through. The first strike business is bad. For sure. But I don't think I can play around first strike. Because there's too many things. Yeah. Because first strike's just gonna get me no matter who I block except for the Crusader, which just gets an extra dude, and yeah, I think I'm more worried about like the Titan strength or something like that. So I think what I'll do instead is block the Crone Hop. It also saves the most damage. And there's first strike, there's first strike. Let's see, what is my opponent thinking about? I 
There's a combination of cards with the Flame Speaker Adept and Pumps that could get me 17 points of damage, I think, down to 1 right now. But I'll deal with that when it happens, because I can't do anything right now. I'm more thinking ahead to my next turn, where I don't think there's... There could be, like, um, the Exile card, where... Okay, so that's good. We got a car off the table. That's absolutely amazing, actually. Um, I was assuming for sure there's a trick that's going to save that. Um, so we'll play our Baleful Eidolon and our Elias Presence. We're going to continue to bash in for five. And then hopefully we'll be able to get the Nyad on next turn. Let's see what my opponent does here. If there's like a Magma Jet or something, I'm just curious. Because the Opaline Unicorn is actually kind of key. Ooh, a Divine Verdict. Ah, oh, that's what it is. Okay, Divine Verdict's gone. That's a bummer, because I was hoping to have a turn 2 clock. Hmm, that will be good-ish. Belfi Elon's is just going to go ahead and block the dude that does the most damage. Which will still be Flame Speaker. If there's a Scry or something, the Eidolon will still take a card. And that's really just what's key. And at this point, it's a race. My deck doesn't want to be racing, but that's what has to happen. Freeze Mender will be good if I can get the idol on back. I think we take the last card out of my opponent's hand, though it's probably a land or my opponent would have been attacking more, right? But anything my opponent draws is just going to be... Yeah, I'll save it, because it doesn't allow me to attack even if I do, like, pull something out. So instead, we'll go ahead with um, the Return Centaur. There's nothing for me that I want to do. The render already has great targets. Ooh, Return Phalanx, thank goodness. So we'll shore up our defense here. It might be right for the Mender to bring back the Disciple because of the life gain. Hmm. That we shall see. Okay, so my opponent's tacking in. I'll make my opponent use whatever is available. Could just be a pump. It is just a pump, okay. Farika's Cure is grand. I think that's what we use here. No, I think we'll wait. Yeah, we'll wait. Could just be another land. Oh, my opponent did play a land last turn. Yep. Just another land, but we will go ahead and attack in. Because every few points of damage we get through really helps us get there. One, two, three, four, five, six, possibly seven or something. Interesting. Oh, yay, oh yay, oh yay. Firing that guy off. One, two, three. Hmm. 
I want him down. So we'll attack in with the Leaf Crown Dryad. Block here, and then we just might have a win. Just might. I don't know how we did this racing this kind of deck. Well, it's probably flooding out from what... Oh, man, that's like the worst for us. Um, my opponent's flooding out from um, the kind of deck I'm sure that uh, it's built out. I doubt my opponent ever wants this many. Four, five, six, seven. Ugh, my opponent's going to go up to 11. Now I don't think we're going to be able to get out of this. But I don't think I can go down to 1 against my opponent, so... have to block. Alright. Creature enchantment. I'm not gonna get us there. The mender does double block with the opaline unicorn to kill the favorite hoplite, assuming no tricks happen. Which, of course, is a hard assumption, but that's, I mean, I have to hope that my opponent doesn't have anything. Uh -huh. Any other targeting spell kills, so that won't matter. But I think we go that route and just try to be staying alive as much as possible. So, since that is the game plan, we're going to grab the uh, Baleful Eidolon back. Is that right? Gosh, I don't know if that's right. It's either um, Baleful Eidolon or Nylea's Disciple. I don't think the life gain's that relevant. It's about killing things right now, because my opponent's gaining way more life than I am. So I'm going to take the Baleful Eidolon. I can also possibly play it next turn if the Opaline Unicorn is alive. I could play the um, Eidolon and the Nimbus Naiad. So... We'll start by attacking for two, so my opponent doesn't get too far out of hand. But that could be wrong. Mm, yeah, that's probably wrong, so no. So my opponent's taking out the, the Mender. Oh, no, it's Magma Jet. I was thinking Lightning Strike for three. Yeah, I probably should have kept the Leaf Crown Dried back in case of Magma Jet were to take out the Unicorn, because uh, now the Mender uh, can't do much. Chrome Hoplite, good. Good, good, good. Very good. All right. One, two, three, four, five, one. Oh. Let's see. Let's see. I'm definitely playing the bow and attacking with the Leaf Crown Dryad. And then we can play the Baleful Eidolon for defense afterwards. The reason why I'm cool with doing that is because Hoplite can't kill it, only the Sorry, the Crone Hoplite can kill it, only the Favorite Hoplite can kill it, because my opponent has no cards. But do I attack in with Farika's Mender? It's the same thing, but then I don't have defense. No, but I like being aggressive here. I don't know how well my opponent can go down like this. Still, I mean, there's plenty of life gain here, but we just want to be forcing my opponent to uh, use the favorite hoplite. Okay, so four, five, six. Don't think we need the extra pump, we just want our uh, Baleful Eidolon. And I do want it separate, not bestowed. So we got it, right? How much life is that? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine? Hmm, maybe we don't have it. I just don't see my opponent attacking in just to gain nine life, because it's going to trade off and then we're going to be in a really good position. And uh, our flyer is going to be able to get us through. Uh -huh. Going in. 
That is okay with me. Cool. Doesn't really matter which guy we do. There we are. Woo! Nail biting. That was fun. Hey! I have no clue how we're going to be able to uh, beat our opponent in this third game here, especially since my opponent's going to be on the play, which is exactly what that deck wants. <sighs> Maybe I do need a Savage Surge. The thing is, I don't really want to pull out this other stuff. The late game is what I need to actually get there. And... I really think these Naiads are key. They won us the last game, that's for sure. I don't know. That's a little too results oriented thinking there, but uh I think it's I think they're still good. Yeah, I'm gonna keep it the same way, even though <sighs> Yeah, we need our two drops. Ooh. Okay, fingers crossed. Good luck. Oh, we're so keeping this. This is awesome against our opponent. Rika's Cure, Biffle Eidolon, and then our Disciple. So we got very lucky. And a Voyage and Seder, no less. I'll go ahead and start off with uh, the Return Phalanx since it holds back the Cone Hoplite for now. And save the Farika's Cure for something a little bit later. Lightning Strike, okay. Took me out, I'm only taking two damage. That's alrighty. Alright. How do I want to sequence this out? I'm still not overly worried about the Freakus Cure. I'm, but I don't really need the Voyaging Seder either, so it looks like it's Baleful Idol on time. And now we are in classic control mode just card advantage out my opponent. Rambler's alright. We're gonna play the Disciple next turn. Ooh, Magma Jet, okay. So my opponent's taken out honestly plays that aren't as important as some of the other dudes. We're gonna kill or take away one of my opponent's cards, we're taking two this turn. The Disciple will be able to trade with Saturn Rambler or some other whatever trick, and then we're going to have a really nice um, follow-ups to be getting us back in the game and hopefully taking over. I'm going to have six because my opponent stepped out. There's nothing else for my opponent to decide to do for the rest of the turn, and I ain't doing anything, that's for sure. All right, what you got? Fabled Hero? Dragon Mantle and Coordinated Assault. Obviously, Coordinated Assault. Okay. Opponent Cycling. Probably just wants to be able to at least trade off these guys. Next turn, I think we play the Satyr and Farika's Cure. I'll snap trade here. I don't know what my opponent has. Could be something, but again, we're happy to make that all those cards be used. Yeah, I'm just trying to get those guys out there. Play our Satyr. It's because I do think the life is important, which is why I don't want to use up my mana. So we're going to try to gain a bunch of life here. And we're going to use a Farika's Cure, hopefully for a 2 for 1. That's certainly what I want to save it for. I'm fine with taking 2 a turn right now. 
save the Fregus here for like a Wingsteed Rider or Fable Tear or something. Another Rambler? Not impressive. Do I just fire off the cure now? No. We're okay right now. Bow is very good. I do think Freakus Cure is kind of key, especially with all of our life gains, so we're going to keep that available. I would love to be able to play uh, the Leaf Crown Dryad as well, but uh, I don't have quite enough. I should have um, tapped Swamp Forest Forest, but I might want to block here. Aw, Ray of Dissolution. I actually prefer that over the Leaf Crown Dryad getting killed. Okay. So it definitely needs to be time to play the Disciple now. Another Hoplite. So my opponent's out of cards. We are just going to go ahead and kill the Hoplite. Something more powerful could come down, but I think it's time to start um, taking over a little bit. Trying to whiff a little bit here. Do I want to attack in? Yeah, I think it's time to attack. I at least get to take out the Flame Speaker Adept and I get my Leaf Crown Dried still, and I don't need the Voyaging Seder itself. So I think we're in good shape. Not good shape. I mean, we're both just top decking. My deck is probably more suited towards top decking, but my opponent has the way better board state. I was hoping that by this point, uh, we would have really taken over the board, and my opponent would be completely out of gas. But that is not the case. We are at a healthy life total against my opponent. Maybe we just start bashing with everything now. I do like that, because if these guys die, like we're in really good shape. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's eight, eight. My opponent's ahead on life. I'm gonna continue just attacking with one. All right. I like him in the 5 5 against the Flame Speaker Adept. There's got to be a creature or combat trick at this point. The opponent could be whiffing with just lands, but that's already kind of happened. No attacks are always good. Scrying and reading the bones is very good. You are definitely being put on the bottom. And yeah, we'll put you on top. You're relevant enough. Ooh, and an emissary. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. So we're going to play Return Centaur now, and then bestow the emissary on something. I could just... I think the 2-4 is too powerful against my opponent to uh, 
to discard it to the emissary. So we will just kind of continue this, this, these beats here. Just three at a time. Nice. tapped out so my opponent can start trying to whittle away different things. I like that all my dudes are out of lightning strike range. That is particularly amazing. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. We have ten we have thirteen damage coming through next turn if my opponent tries to go all in. But I'm okay with doing the defensive things still. Make my opponent use up the cards. Because our guys are so good on D. Fabled Herald's gone. Thank goodness. Ooh, Seder, that's annoying. Fabled Hero, I'm glad it's gone, but all these one drops would have been perfectly fine for my opponent to have, because it's basically just blah. I did just realize I got rid of the Opaline Unicorn, despite the fact that I actually don't have any fixing. Um, I have plenty of lands out, but I don't have any ways to uh, cast my, my Nimbus Naiads. And those certainly would close out a game fast against my opponent. Okay. Let's see what I draw, and then I'm curious. Ooh. Agent? I think we're going to save for Erebus's Emissary. What do I want to put on... Uh, I'm going to bestow the Emissary on something. Which do I want? I do want to make sure I keep enough back on defense. And I think the Disciple is going to be the main defense, dude. I want the Emissary to be attacking. Um, and I'd rather the 5-5 five, five than a 2-4 back. So we'll put the Emissary on their turn centaur and attack in with both. trying to think of what, you know, things like Dauntless Onslaught. We already saw the Cornet Assault, right? Didn't we get that out? Yeah, Cornet Assault's gone. Different. There's the uh, Divine Verdict. Happily, every single one of my creatures has a, uh, bestow creature on it, an enchantment. So even if something like that dies, I still have something falling off and coming down as as a follow-up threat. So yeah, here's the Divine Verdict. As discussed. But we still got a nice 3-3. And we're slowly whittling away the opponent. Will there be a block here? No. Alright. Slowly but surely. We might start attacking this next turn five. Yeah, it's lethal, so everything has to be ooh, Phalanx Leader, that's a really good one. So we attack with everything because they have to be blocked. And yeah, it's just there's so many things my opponent could have to like Trigger flanks gonna make things huge, but more than likely we're killing a bunch of stuff. The scariest thing would be a dauntless onslaught type effect that triggers the flanks leader and triggers something else, because then there's a lot of power and toughness being added to the board. That makes the Phalanx Leader a... Th one, two... Uh, gosh, a 4-4. Four, four. I don't think that's happening, because I think my opponent would have already 
Interesting. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. How much damage is coming back? One, two, three, four, possibly five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. So the Ramblers pulled out. Um, we're going to play our agent because we don't want to get like a Titan Strength or something that adds plus two, plus zero, and plus, you know, three, plus one, all these different crazy things to the board. Because there is enough in this deck with the Phalanx Leader out that can do 13 damage from these three creatures in one turn. What else do we have here? Ooh, Keepsake Gorgon. That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I'm actually okay with just attacking without the agent being um, unblockable. Because I actually want these guys gone. And it trades right now with anything. And it gets cards off the table. And then we can have the follow-up Keepsake Gorgon play. Hmm. All right, let's continue the beats here. Again, having this many creatures attacking in this much power means there's there's blocks that have to happen. And if these guys get killed, our dryad just comes back for defense. I'm trying to rack my brain for how I could lose this. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, Titan Strength or like anything. A, a Titan Strength of Phalanx Leader on the crackback kills me. It's the only thing I can think of right now because we need the Scry and the Pump and the Target and the Phalanx Leader to get there. Okay, so blocks are going down. Nope, not so much. Put blocks there. And there. That's interesting. So if my opponent blocks this way, do I discard my Gorgon to go for the win? What? Dies, dies. Well, right now, I'm going to get a position where everything's dying. So my opponent has to have something. There's the Titan Strength. So these guys still trade. I get my Dryad back. And they still trade. So we're still in good shape. And then what life gain is there? Yeah, this should be a life gain, because I don't want to throw away the Gorgon. If this is some other creature and not as amazing as the Gorgon, I would just discard it to the Erebos' Emissary and try to go for the win right now. But I'm going to play it super conservative, draw this game out. Sorry. And then, uh... Yeah, just kind of... get there in this way. Wait a second, I thought we were... Oh, that was the first round. I thought, I thought a couple other things were dying here. Yeah, that's what I thought. So we're up six. Try to catch up. So tell me, should I just have discarded Airbus Emissary? My opponent still had one card in hand. Could could have gone south. I didn't. I still think we're in pretty good shape. Aside from that exile card where he gains four life, not too sure. Anyways, super fun match again. Wow, crazy. I can't believe we got out of that. Really excited to go to the finals. See you then.